Hi guys, it's Jamila. Welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I'm feeling really hype because uh, I had caffeine. <laughs> so let's do this February wrap up. I actually did try to film this video already, uh, but let me kind of show y'all how that went. Anyway, and that is... Boo! <laughs> You okay? <laughs> Layla. Ugh, oh my goodness. It is well. I actually was a little like character and actually liking her because in the first book I did not like Catherine. What is this child on? Did you eat all the sugar in the house while I was sleeping? What is going on? <laughs> Alright guys, so that is all for this one. Enjoyed this video. So yeah, didn't go that well. Had my daughter with me and she just was not having it. She was like, look ma, I don't know why you think you can do things outside of holding me and playing with me and all this stuff. So yeah, you know, mom life. <laughs> Let's get into this video. February was a month where I focused on reading black authors and black books. I did not stray outside of that because I really wanted to focus on black experiences, black voices, black fiction, blah, blah, blah. You know. So yeah, let's just go into the tea. In completion, I read five books. Overall, I read six books kind of okay well I'll explain the first book I want to share with you guys that I've read actually <laughs> I DNF this book and that is Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler and I'm really sad about this my lips sorry my lips need some love so yes this was a book that I ended up DNFing I got good ways into it but although I didn't have any problems with anything except this specific element of the book and the reason being it was a little bit triggering for me for reasons I don't want to go into yes so this book follows Shori who is a she's a 53 year old vampire and the book starts off with her waking up injured and she has no memory of what happened to her. I don't think she knows who she is, all of these things. And she's in the body of what appears to be, like her body looks like she's a 10 or 11 year old child. And that would have been fine and dandy had this book not delved into so many sexual interactions yeah that was just too much for me to read knowing the characters that were having sexual relations with this 53 year old vampire that looks like a 10 or 11 year old you know they were confused like oh you look like a child this isn't this doesn't seem right you know but yet and still I don't know if it's because of the kind of like sire bond or what have you when she bites people or whatever yet and still they still engage in sexual acts and it was just not it for me it was very uncomfy very uncomfy and I just couldn't get past it I'm not sure why the author made that choice to have the main character look like a child but it just kind of disturbed me too much to look past and be able to enjoy the actual book. I was really excited about this. I did want to read a vampire book, but this just, I couldn't do it. I'm sorry, guys. That was the problem of the whole book. I didn't have any problems with anything else. If you can look past those things, then maybe you could have a better experience with this book, but it just, I wish I had known because on the back, I don't know maybe I just didn't read it because now that I look it says found alone in the woods she appears to be a little black girl with traumatic amnesia and near fatal wounds I don't know how I missed the little part I don't know I guess in my brain I wasn't thinking like that little like I, I don't know but yeah that was 
something I should have, I guess, researched better. I'm very bad at researching. I'm just bad at it. Okay, moving on. This was DNF'd. Okay, so on to the next book. I have <sighs> my favorite book of the month, Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas. This book was absolutely amazing to me. And I think the reason I found it so amazing, I, I have heard that this isn't a lot of people's favorite book out of the three books that Angie Thomas has written. But for me, this book really hit different. I did not expect to love it as much as I did, even though I was really excited about this one particularly. But this is Concrete Rose, which follows Maverick, Star's father from The Hate You Give. It's set in the same neighborhood as The Hate You Give and On the Come Up, which is Angie Thomas's two other books. And it just it was just so good to me i cried like three times reading this book ah but anyway so like i said this book follows maverick and he is a young teenager in this book back in the i think he's a teen in the 90s something like that but this this goes back he's just pretty much trying to navigate the fact that he is a father and he has this girl named Lisa that he really likes but she is not the mother of this child that he found out is his and it's just like it's just him trying to grow into his own trying to figure out how to take care of his family without falling into the wrong things trying to keep up with the guidance that his older cousin gave him in regards to staying out of the drug game so pretty much he's a part of the king lords but he's only supposed to be a part of the king lords in name only just to have protection and not have any problems but of course you know when you're poor and you're struggling and this looks like the only viable option to make money that you can actually live off of as far as selling drugs he's tempted by the the opportunity and the money that it'll give him to be able to take care of his son but at the same time he's warring with the idea of this is the same thing that took my father from me so what do I do? Do I take care of my kid, no regrets? Or do I do the right thing and take, you know, these small jobs that are barely giving me money but taking all my time, you know? So first of all, something I love about all of Angie Thomas's books is she really, in a world that dehumanizes black people so often, so much, she really shows that we're human, we have emotions, we can be soft, we love our families, we have families, we're people just like everyone else. And the way she goes through emotion in her books, I just, ugh. And then with this one specifically, it just hit me different because Maverick, some people may not be aware, but in America, specifically because that's the experience I can speak to, black men are not usually or black people in general are not given the opportunity to express something as simple as our pain express our sadness express what we go through to people without being shut down or even even in our own communities especially for black men or black boys they're not allowed to express their emotions or be sensitive because it's considered weak and Maverick definitely goes through a lot of emotions in this book um some of the main ones being the hardships of being a parent as young as he is and the hardships of just being a parent in general losing sleep to the point where it tests your sanity and you know your baby crying and crying and not you know being able to figure out what's wrong what's going to make them stop and there was just this one scene in the book that I just related to so much where it just all got too overwhelming for him. And I, that was probably the first scene I, I cried in. It just like, it broke my heart, but 
I felt that, you know? The other plot point that I felt like was very important was just Maverick's relationship with his father and, you know, if you can imagine having a father in prison and trying to have a relationship with your father who is in prison and trying to get that guidance you need from your father to grow up upright is very difficult. And I appreciated how that was touched on in this book because it's so common, like obviously that's not the only experience, but it's so common for young black children not to have their fathers and to lose their fathers to the prison system. We see the way it goes, y'all know. like. People can act obtuse, but the truth is we know the rate that black people are arrested and put in prison compared to other people in this country. It's just, it's so, I'm just so glad that Angie Thomas decided to touch on that because it's just not easy. And even with me, I have family members who are in prison right now because of these same issues and it's always you know people always say like well you should have done right you should have done this you should have done that but at the end of the day have you ever been in our shoes have you ever experienced what it's like to be this poor and all you are trying to do is survive it doesn't excuse you know the killing the violence any of that but people are literally put in a position where they are trying so hard just to survive. So this book just encompassed all of that and I just loved it so much. And just like the relationships and the ups and downs were just so realistic to me. I just, this is definitely a new favorite book of all time as are all of Angie Thomas's books. I'm a huge fan of her for sure. Her books are great. I just, I love them. I gave it five out of five stars to be expected that's all i have to say about that actually that's not all i have to say but we have to stop talking about this so i can talk to you guys about the other books but yeah all right so moving on another book let's see which one did i don't know what order i read these in but the next book that i finished was whispers of shadow and flame by l penelope this is uh book two in the earth singer chronicles the first book is a uh, song of blood and stone which i loved and for this book although i enjoyed the world and the magic system well first let's talk about what this book is about so i think you can read these books in whatever uh order you want to i think because i think this one was set during the same time as the events of the first book from different character point of views but this follows Kiara and Darwin. Um, Kiara is an assassin. She's forced to become an assassin and she wields a deadly magic she can barely control. Kiara is known as the Poison Flame and then you have Darwin who is the Shadow Fox. He's like a legendary rebel known amongst the people and so the story kind of goes from there he's her target she's the assassin and they end up falling for each other i don't know if that's a spoiler i wouldn't think so because each one of them yeah like they can't stay away from each other pretty much but this book is very interesting in my opinion however i was not as invested in this one as i was in the first book song of blood and stone i don't know what it was i did enjoy it but it's just not like a favorite but i enjoyed it enough to read the next book and i actually got the next book to read so i'm excited for that one hopefully i love it but yes if you want an enjoyable book by a black author this series is a good one i think i just would like for some things to be a little more fleshed out so i could be a little more invested i can't really pinpoint what it is but yeah i definitely definitely recommend the first book the second book is good as well so i'd say just give it a shot but i definitely start with the first book um i gave this book i believe about 3.75 
stars ish something like that so a little lower than the first book but I did enjoy it I not there wasn't any point where I just wanted to stop reading it like I did want to read it I kept coming back to it so yeah um that's <laughs> what I want to say about this one one complaint I have heard about this I didn't necessarily feel it because I was just curious about some of like how that would go for those characters but one complaint I've heard is that this book follows too many characters and the other book oh maybe that's why I wasn't as invested that could be it um maybe it followed too many characters uh but yeah it, it followed a few characters and a few storylines to keep up with but I think it all kind of it it ties together for sure okay so moving on we have this one which is black girl unlimited by echo brown um i actually rated this one on goodreads three stars however i think i'm gonna go back and change my rating because the impression that this left on me really was deeper than i realized so i believe this book is part memoir it follows a girl named echo brown she is a wizard from the east side of Cleveland and pretty much the book follows her trying to navigate the this rough rough childhood that she's going through. She's trying to navigate the fact that her mother is a drug addict and just oh my goodness pretty much this book has a ton ton of trigger warnings including um sexual assault molestation. Ugh drug use drug addiction the list goes on and on this book handles some very very heavy topics very heavy very triggering this book hurt me um this book really hurt and it also had its beauty in the way echo brown tells her story and to me what i felt like was happening because it's kind of like a magical realism type of book and I know some people complain about that wizard aspect and how it takes away from the story but what I took it as was this is a young girl who who uses this idea that she is a wizard as a way to escape what's happening around her and she uses it as a way to get through what's happening to her and deal with her trauma and just survive pretty much like that's what I took from it I don't know if that's actually what the author was trying to do but this was just so so heartbreaking in a lot of ways and I just the reason this hurt so bad is because the stories that are being told and what happens around Echo, all of these things are things that I'm very familiar with. Things that my family members as children had to deal with. Grandparents, parents, things and traumas that they had to deal with. It was just heartbreaking to read because I know that this is a lot of children black children specifically in america's experience dealing with all this trauma and just the way it was relayed in in the way echo saw her mother as a wizard because with all the strife they dealt with and all of the bad things that they dealt with in being poor she felt like her mother was able to make magic out of it by you know being able to find food and you know things like this like when they were hungry and stuff like that so it just this book just hit very painfully like it punched me in the gut it, it grabbed my guts and tw twisted you know so these are real experiences just keep in mind when you read that read this that these are real experiences and I think if you think of it from the way that I kind of perceived it it helps you kind of understand the choice of Echo being a wizard um and it becomes less less misunderstood I think but yeah I'm going to up, up my rating for this to four stars 
be careful when reading this though okay so you guys the last book i have here is deathless divide by justina ireland this book is the second book to dread nation i believe this is a duology correct me if i'm wrong but this is a sequel to dread nation and i really 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 enjoyed this i would give it a 4.5 stars i really enjoyed it um so this book is set post civil war america where i think at the battle of gettysburg people just started coming up from the battle like dead people started rising pretty much zombies we have zombies going on and this book is just the continuation of what the events obviously that happened in the first book we know this okay moving on so i really enjoyed this one i really enjoyed catherine more than i expected like i did not like catherine that much in the first book but in this book i really enjoyed her perspective and her uh her background understanding where she came from and why she is the way she is and just her development of um the development of jane and Catherine's relationship and friendship just really was in a lot of ways touching although jane could be a pain in the ass Catherine really stuck with her as a friend and I loved seeing friendship that's something I feel like we don't get a lot in books it's a really really good friendship I love a good friendship more than I love a good romance for sure and yeah so I definitely enjoyed this book it, it caught a little tear sometimes I got a little tear inside my eye a little bit um but I didn't cry but <laughs> it it evoked some emotions but yeah i really enjoyed this and i like the ending and everything i recommend this duology i think it's a duology uh please don't sue me if i'm wrong but i really recommend it i think it's very good if you're looking for a zombie book because i rarely get to read zombie books so i was impressed but <laughs> yes um I enjoyed it I recommend it and I don't have too too much to say about this one because it is a sequel and I don't want to spoil anything but I definitely enjoyed it 4.5 stars I would give it so the last book I thought that was the last book but I just thought about it so the last book that I read was a children's book and that was hair love by Matthew a cherry I believe it's cherry yeah I don't have a physical copy of this book but I will be getting one but I read it in the bookstore so it was great, um, super cute, adorable. If you guys have not watched the short cartoon of this that uh, got awards, I believe, is very popular. I love that little cartoon and I had to read this book. So if you haven't watched it, you can watch it on YouTube. I think I'm going to try to link it down below for you guys so you can see it because it's just, oh, warms my heart and the hair and just. The black girl magic, black dad, black family magic is just so damn cute. Um, and just, uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm not okay. Anyways, it was so cute and I'm definitely going to add it to my daughter's library. I really want her to be able to see, I, I can tell already with the curls and the, and the coarseness of her hair, she's going to be a lot like mommy in that regard. So I want to add something like this to her library in her room and I'm just really excited to get my hands on my own copy of this for her. Um, but yeah, that was a nice little way, nice short book to wrap up the month for me and I wish I got, to, um, sorry you guys, my battery died so I'm just gonna do a quick little ending here but I wish I got some more books I definitely there were some that I really really wanted to get to like a river of royal blood which I did start but I wasn't really getting into it fast enough for me and um jackpot by Nick Stone and I oh Americana I wanted to read Americana because you guys have been telling me to read that for ages and I still failed you. I'm sorry. But yeah, all of the books that I did read though, except for Fledgling, <laughs> were really, really good to me and I don't think I had a bad book. Yeah, everything was great. So 
obviously I need to be reading way more black books but thank you guys so much for watching I hope this video isn't too much of a hot mess usually I know I know that lately my videos have been a little bit of a mess even some of the editing so I really apologize I feel so so bad but it's like the best I can do right now because it's just so hectic I haven't mastered this mom thing so please bear with me and if you have a request for any content that's more interesting because I've been feeling a little uh, a little bit like sad lately because I feel like my engagement has cut in half and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong <laughs> um and I think maybe one of the things is that my content is a little bit boring to be honest with you I think I need to mix it up a little bit and do something different but if you guys have any suggestions and want to help me out to get my engagement up or things you think that you guys would be more likely to engage with definitely let me know down below if you're so kind as to do that one thing that I why am I holding my kids toy one thing that I really really need to work on and I know I need to work on I read every single comment but with my daughter and even I can't even completely blame her because even before I wasn't the best at it but I would eventually get to commenting on responding to every comment on my video but now it's been just so hard so I really need to once I master the whole scheduling of editing and all of that stuff I need to take some time to respond to comments because I do feel bad and I think it discourages you guys from commenting when I don't respond and I hate myself for that but I'm really really gonna be working on that for the rest of the year but I do read every single one of you guys comments and it just makes me so freaking happy and I need to show that happiness Ugh, but it can be a bit hard with my wonderful demanding daughter especially lately she just in this mood where all she wants is me and it's it's flattering it is flattering but I need some time so yeah you guys that is that I thank you guys so much for watching I'm sorry for going on and on but don't forget to like this video and subscribe and I also want to take a moment because I don't know if you'll see this but thank you so much bookish luna for sending me black the black veins by ashia monet off of my wish list this book is gorgeous and it's floppy and it's everything i ever dreamed and it's just beautiful look at this like oh this looks like it's gonna be so freaking good i'm really excited about this one and then i also want to thank you bookish luna for sending me Outlander by Diana Gabaldon. This is one that I've really wanted to read for a long time and this is also a beautiful floppy paperback. I love me a floppy paperback you guys. So thank you so much. That was so kind of you. You literally sent this on a day where I really needed something to lift my spirits and when I tell you it put the biggest biggest smile on my face and ugh and I don't know I'm just so grateful thank you so much if you see this I hope you see this but thank you it really means a lot I'm gonna stop talking now because all I'm gonna do is gush and cry <laughs> so thank you so much you guys for those of you who support my channel through sending me books that I can read and <laughs> heart 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 <laughs> all right guys see you in the next video bye